शुरू करो अपू यू कैन स्टार्ट आई थिंक इंट्रोड्यूस या uh hi everyone good morning uh, today we have with us uh, rucha jaikitkar uh, she is an architect she graduated from the school two years ago uh, and she is the first batch i think during the pandemic to give a thesis uh, her thesis looks at uh, healthcare design uh, healthcare actually healthcare infrastructure in bombay and uh, i think she'll talk more about it so i'll uh, and right now i think she's currently waiting to go to the us to pursue her masters in healthcare design uh there rucha over to you i think thank you okay uh, i just share my screen uh, uh can you see the can you see the presentation uh, not yet not yet not yet you have to share, i think share your whole window oh okay okay yeah don't share only the window of the uh, yeah Uh, now yeah, you can see it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So basically, uh, I will speak about the healthcare sector uh, within the country, the hierarchy of the healthcare delivery system, uh, the my scope of study within the whole system, uh, the responsibilities of the state, uh, the study of uh, existing infrastructure, the determin de determinants of health. Uh, healthcare practices and some of the case studies i came across to formulate my argument uh, and design a program uh, so basically uh, i started off with looking at the private and the public sector within the country and how the healthcare system has been commercialized over the years and that's why there is a, a very uh, the ratio of private to the public health sector is very uh, of with the kind of population that india has so a lot of uh, people cannot afford private health sector because of the, because of the out of pocket expenditure uh, that uh, uh, that is there in order to uh, access these facilities so my major focus was on public health sector uh, within bombay and uh, i looked at uh, the primary secondary and tertiary care in a way that uh, uh hello uh, yeah yeah rucha we can yeah. hear you yeah so uh, so the whole, whole system is divided into primary secondary and tertiary care within urban centers and larger urban pockets in the country uh to decentralize uh the system and uh, give delivery of healthcare to a larger population so primary healthcare caters to all the basic uh, uh, basic healthcare needs uh, to tertiary where uh, the healthcare needs are complex so this is actually the overall diagram of the uh, healthcare delivery system in mumbai so there are a lot of major hospitals and larger institutions under the central and state government but the implementation and delivery of healthcare system falls under the local government and the pmc uh, so it includes all the uh, research facilities and uh, uh, medical colleges and hospitals which come under the tertiary care all the general hospitals in the secondary and uh, all the dispensaries and health posts in the primary sector uh, and my study was to look at the primary care because it's Uh, i i wanted it to be the entry point for the population to access uh, access healthcare uh, since i was looking at public healthcare uh, and not individual uh, health of a person uh, the primary healthcare covers a, covers a wider spectrum of healthcare facilities uh, in the city so it uh, uh, caters to immunization health camps uh, Uh, camps for women and children, and, so, and it uh, accesses uh, the dense pockets within the cities. So it uh, caters to a larger spectrum of people within the city. Uh, but uh, so I also studied a few statistics that uh, looked at. Um, I will talk about the infrastructure provided at the primary care for dispensaries and health posts. 
and it was found out that all of these uh, smaller but could be uh, efficient uh, health infrastructure in the city that actually refer its patients to higher uh, hospitals like the general and uh, the specialized hospitals than treating it than treating the patient at the primary level itself. Uh, so this was this is actually the ideal ratio of uh, dispensaries and health codes that have to be uh, in the city. So one uh, PFC for every fifteen thousand uh, population. But currently, this this has been the ratio. Looking at the administrative hierarchy of the system. Uh, Yeah, looking at the administrative hierarchy, uh, the central and the state government actually are responsible for creating the policies and planning in terms of uh, uh, the funds that are provided to the healthcare system. Uh, but the implementation eventually falls to the local uh, government. Uh, and in Mumbai, the uh, city is divided into wards and the administration is branched uh, at the ward level. Every ward has a medical officer of health that looks after uh, the healthcare in the city. Uh, it also includes uh, environment maintenance, sanitation, uh, water, sewage, all of that falls on, under the healthcare department. Uh, so, I also, uh, so during the process, I met, met with the MOH, the HOD of healthcare, uh, who actually go out for these outreach programs within uh, denser pockets where there is a ch the chances of outbreak are more. Uh, so these are some of the uh, responsibilities and uh, camps and activities that the, uh, the health programs that are conducted by the government. Also, the private sector is registered in the, uh, with the government. Uh, but the checkups are not, uh, so there is no regulation of funds that are uh, there within the. We've lost her, have we? Yeah, I think she might be having network trouble. Okay, okay. Just wait two minutes or I'll call her. Yeah, I think so. <coughs> yeah. Okay, we'll ask her to speak a little louder also. Uh, yeah, I will. But she's, I think, talking at the top of her voice. <laughs> she's very soft spoken. Okay. Hey, did she have the network problems? Because I'm moving around the house to check my main network. Yeah. No, she's she, currently she not was... in the meeting. So I think no, she's she's been was it stuttering? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, Rucha, can you talk a little bit louder? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, perfect. Okay. I I don't know, I can listen connection. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so basically the MCGM uh, at the ward level uh, carries out activities like the supervision of public health infrastructure. It regulates communicable disease outbreaks, uh, registrations of birth and deaths, uh, supervising the hygiene standards in urban areas. Uh, also addressing physical, mental, and social health of individuals, and uh, looking at illegal uh, medical uh, practices, family planning, immunization services, and inspection of all health uh, infrastructure in the city. That also includes private healthcare. Uh, but the checkups are uh, not as frequent as there has to be for public health. So basically the funds uh, come from the uh, center and 
uh, towards the larger hospitals. And it is from the ward level that the help posts and municipal dispensaries are funded. Uh, so basically, these are the uh, hospitals uh, that come under the BNC. And the referrals are given to these hospitals from the dispensaries and PAs in every ward. Uh, so my major focus was looking at KVS ward, which has one of the largest residential populations, and has Cooper Hospital as the major hospital within the ward, which acts as a referral for that particular ward. So uh, I identified the dispensaries and PHCs within the ward. Uh, so locations which had both the health post and dispensary were called as PHCs, which is the urban peripheral health and there are also individual health posts and dispensaries across. So right now there are 11 in uh, the KMS world. Uh, so the idea was to uh, provide uh, OPD services at MUPs and dispensaries that also included uh, testing and uh, testing and uh, medicines to the people. Uh, unfortunately, not all uh, the dispensaries have laboratories, laboratories for testing, and so some tests are outsourced, which uh, increases the economic, uh, the out-of-pocket expenditure for these uh, facilities. And that's why a lot of referral happens to Cooper and uh, causing overcrowding at the uh, tertiary care. Uh, the help posts are responsible for immunization and outreach programs. So they go within communities uh, uh, for, uh, for vaccinations or uh, you know, awareness programs uh, within the city. And the medical team is small for both these uh, uh, for both the uh, help posts and dispensaries. So dispensary has the uh, main doctor, the assistant staff, and the uh, staff for pharmacy and lab. And for health posts, there's an AM coordinator. And the AM midwives are from within the community who are trained and uh, taken, their help is taken to actually uh, go for these outreach programs. Uh, so I documented some of these UPXCs and PXCs in the And uh, there were a few. Uh, drawbacks that were seen, the kind of scale that these institutions uh, have. Uh, some of them are not actually identifiable because they are within a larger institution, for example, a school or within a commercial uh, building within a market. So not everyone is aware of these centers because there is no definite marker or uh, the timings are usually not uh, followed at all these dispensaries. Uh, so there is there is a small footfall that happens uh, at the dispensary because uh, it, it it is time consuming when uh, most of the cases are referred to a higher hospital. So people prefer to directly go to these tertiary care uh, uh, caregivers instead of coming to the PXC. So uh, these were the major drawbacks, so lack of awareness regarding location, difference in scale, the out-of-pocket expenditure to outsourcing of testing, and also according to the DP, the area allotment is supposed to be 800 square meters, but on site it is less than 200 square meters. Uh, so also when I spoke to uh, some of the uh, health officers uh, in the PLCs, they were uh, majorly fresh graduates or retired staff that uh, have that want to uh, that aspire to go to private institutions or have retired from it. So, uh, uh, so the government facilities uh, are used especially for uh, you know experience, and the monetary benefit is actually comes from the private sector. So that is something that. Uh, that I want to address in the uh, Also, so, uh, 
you cannot actually determine uh, the uh, how healthy a person is. Or, uh, so th there were a few guidelines that were set uh, through these determinants, which included physical environment, or economic uh, factors uh, of a person, the uh, healthcare services uh, in and around the community, so education, social environment, individual behavior. Uh, biology and genetics of an individual and public utilities that uh, can be accessed by these people. So uh, it's not only about being treated uh, if you have, if you are unhealthy, but also uh, health is a lifestyle. So the, a lot of other factors also affect uh, your health. So uh, your uh, social well being, uh, physical and mental well being is also important. So these were some of the degrees that I wanted to touch uh, to my intervention and program. Yeah, so like I was saying, uh, health also covers 100% of the population. Uh, so through uh, primary health care, I wanted to address the, the promotion, prevention, curative, and rehabilitative aspect of health. Uh, and these were sort of the guidelines that help, help me uh, create a program for uh, intervention uh, within my thesis. So uh, health education was an important aspect uh, because a lot of people are unaware of things that are happening. Even, uh, for example, in terms of COVID, there was lack of information at first, but uh, it is the responsibility of the institution and the government to actually uh, make people aware of it. Uh, prevention in terms of uh, creating infrastructure for physical activity, uh, promoting healthy food choices, uh, curative aspects to the OPDs and inpatient care, and rehabilitation post operative uh, care. So, on the basis of this, I designed, uh, I, I uh, put down program guidelines that I wanted to address to the students uh, that I just want to address. Uh, so uh, basically it, uh, it addressed the determinants of health. Uh, I will talk about the finalized programs that I came across uh, uh, in the later part of the presentation. Uh, I came across a few case studies that were uh, relevant to our context. And in terms of uh, the systemic study, I looked at China with the kind of population that they uh, have and a similar problem that they faced before the 2000. Uh, there was uh, uh, a, a lot of uh, infrastructure and uh, resources were taken from the smaller county and town hospitals uh, in one of the provinces in, in, in China. And the specialty hospital became very uh, dominating and overwhelming for uh, the medical staff because it was only the specialty hospital that carried out all the key functions of primary to tertiary care. So the World Health Organization actually introduced a body to, uh, uh, to disintegrate the system and uh, uh, gave very specialized tasks to uh, the county hospital and the specialty hospital. And it followed a, a method of two-way referral system, as in Europe. Uh, the hospital denied uh, treatment to uh, certain so sort of uh, Healthcare issue, but referred it to some to the place which actually uh, had the duty of doing that. So that uh, uh, that was that created efficient uh, healthcare delivery within China, and it is still following a two-way referral system. So it also the body also created a, a place for guiding and training doctors and for these levels so they, uh, so they could specialize in one particular field. Uh, Delhi also had an initiator of Mohalla clinics uh, 
uh, some of which uh, are still operational, but um, the drawback is that they do not, do not have enough funds to do this. But it was a good initiative to uh, build these quota cabins within uh, urban villages in the city that provided free healthcare for uh, basic for uh, diseases. Uh, it also provide, uh, provided uh, free medicines and uh, the concept was to actually, uh, as citizens, you could rent out your space, uh, which was a two-room with an attached toilet to the government and then you could get a uh, rental return. But uh, this was a very effective method to, uh, uh, to uh, bring in a lot of uh, health infrastructure within a couple of weeks. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, the architectural pieces, I was looking at uh, how the PFC or the primary health center can uh, actually uh, be trans transformed as public spaces than just a hospital where you need to visit only when it is required, uh, but also as a social space. Uh, 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 as a social space for people to actually come in and interact. Also, uh, the healthcare facility as a plug-in was another idea that I was looking at. Uh, so these were strategies to actually uh, create fast, uh, readable spaces within communities in order to accelerate the rate of uh, healthcare uh, delivery uh, So this, even this was uh, a part of my study wherein um, this is a building by uh, Alvar Alto where also the furniture and the kind of spaces that can automatically uh, accelerate your uh, well-being when you are within this was one of the projects that I studied. Uh, in terms of program study, in order to uh, look at uh, health care, health education and awareness, uh, this was a health museum, uh, this was a public health museum uh, uh, to promote uh, and document the uh, health care scenario within the United States for malaria, smallpox, tuberculosis. And they also had other programs that uh, interacted with uh, high school students and medical staff to actually research and uh, create uh, I mean, share ideas regarding everything that happened in the So my intervention uh, was, my, uh, my proposed intervention was to create a body that actually connected the practices in the uh, at the city ward and the community level. Uh, it mainly focused on uh, the health education administration, delivery and epidemiology, which uh, investigates new diseases and uh, stops uh, disease outbreak uh, in the city. Uh, so it was actually a, a public health institution that not only delivered uh, uh, healthcare facilities but also administered and brought education under one uh, and decentralized uh, and managed the uh, primary sector of it. Uh, so my intervention looked at uh, uh, the program was to actually bring in the uh, public and private sectors the medical staff that took uh, a place for discussion and uh, training. So probably the senior or the experienced staff of the private sector can also uh, uh, contribute within the public health when required. It can also uh, uh, create, so it, it, it lacks as an umbrella body for the uh, smaller PHCs within the city and the ward and also administer, uh, provide funds uh, whenever uh, necessary and instead of outsourcing uh, testing to private institutions or 
other labs that can also provide a laboratory facility for all the PHC. Uh, instead of giving a lab to every PHC, it can be a center for uh, for all the PHCs to actually outsource their testing instead of directly directing them to larger hospitals. Uh, so also at the master plan level, uh, I designed these smaller PSCs uh, in, on the basis of typology and uh, kind of sites that uh, they could uh, occupy. So uh, the idea was to look at a larger football where people uh, uh, across the city where and then create combinations to create uh, an intervention. So a government institutions. Uh, and uh, places near government institutions or these places, then club, clubbing as clubbing dynamics and standalone units according to the context of the site. Uh, I can show you. Uh, Uh, Apu, can I show the uh, the uh, design design diagram? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, just uh, show them what you've done also, huh? yes. <coughs> So basically, this was my uh, design diagram for the integration, where it uh, included the you know, lab services. And since uh, the health department also had uh, uh, sanitation and water within its department, there, and we also have regular testing as well uh, to prevent an outbreak within the uh, settlement. Uh, it also had an inpatient ward, isolation wards, uh, and so I uh, added isolation ward and operated care. Uh, uh, with the onset of the pandemic, uh, my idea was to actually only provide outpatient care. So that was uh, the primary uh, health aspect of it. But uh, influenzas and uh, basically fever clinics were something that uh, really uh, needed care. So, yeah. for example, COVID is something uh, that this institution could have addressed. Uh, and uh, Amplified when uh, the healthcare system in the city uh, it consi consists of consider consisted of uh, administration offices and uh, basically the health department uh, instead of being within the ward office as uh, for me it required uh, it felt the need to have an institute in itself which can carry out more functions than. Uh, it already does, and uh, also a PSC uh, with the So, uh, so each of the blocks uh, addressed uh, one aspect of health. So it also created uh, public spaces uh, where. There could be mass vaccinations, immunization, and uh, also give, giving out information to people regarding uh, any kind of diseases. I uh, also incorporated a public health exhibition for, uh, uh, for anyone to come across and see it, it, sort of an inclusive building. I, uh, Rucha, yeah. Uh, you're not saying anything, no? Nah? I, I thought we lost you. That's why. Yeah. Okay. So. 
So, um, so uh, this was like, and, uh, so I created modules for the uh, smaller PSCs to create standardization, and these will actually act as landmarks within the city uh, that promote health. So it was basically a uh, like a Bay typology that could uh, act as a plugin, uh, probably an education or an uh, to a gymnasium. Everything that incorporates uh, health, not only in a curative way, but also promotional and uh, prevention. So I identified a few sites or within the ward itself where these could be possible in intervention. And similar sites can be actually seen uh, across the city. Yeah. Okay, you're done. You know, are you there? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, thanks, Lucha. Does anyone have any questions for her? I have a question now. Lucha, could you go back yeah. to those uh, kind of elevational drawings that you had and the rendered elevation is very nice. You want to just explain what is where on that? Uh, yeah. On the overall building. Yeah. The kind of almost elevational drawing. The views, the renders. Uh, yeah. 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 So, so uh, basically, the first block was for the laboratories and research. Uh, the second one was for, for the inpatient care. Uh, this was for the administrative block, and this consisted of the PSC. Uh, I can show you the program diagram again. And it was all sort of connected to a colony. So all the public services, uh, all the public facilities within the building were connected horizontally. Uh, so all the public seminar areas, so open care, and all of that was connected by a colony. And all the central spaces acted as, uh, these spaces acted as pull out spaces for carrying out public uh, All right, in the right side building, which is uh, furthest east, it seems to have like the the building has like almost an inclined top. What is that? Is that a public space at the top or something? Why does it cut like that, the building? Uh, Eastern building. The sloping roof. Yeah. Is there a public space? Is that the more public building? What is... Uh, yeah, so uh, I also incorporated uh, heating spaces within this block. So the ground, the first two uh, floors were for the PSC, and then this was actually a public space uh, for a library, and uh, there was also a PWD department on site that I used. Uh, but like the whole building act, uh, was like object uh, on site. So these are the four blocks that address every aspect of uh, healthcare. Sure. Great. Does any of the students have anything to ask, Richa? All right. So there was just one thing that I needed to reinforce right and you know uh, when Richa talked about the different parts of her hospital as her final design and right in the beginning she had one page 
in which, Richa, you've shown four types of interventions, like you talked about uh, curative, preventive. Can we see that page? Because I think that is very important for the class to see where they can plug in. You had four levels of intervention. Um, yeah. yeah, this was really nice because, you know, it talks about, uh, at especially at neighborhood levels, these four uh, words were very important, promotion, prevention, curative, and rehabilitation. And then you also talked about, you know, you guys remember that Rucha talked about the the case studies of the Mohallas and China and even and even the ones in Switzerland. And then they, they kind of uh, talk about how a holistic health care is so important at, at all levels. So this is a very nice page. I just wanted to bring it to your notice. And then the what she showed us with the, the four parts of her final project also have this that kind of ability of the hospital to reach out to the community in a much better way, not just dispense medicine and beds, you know. So that was very nice. The idea was also to, so apart from the main institution, the smaller PLC or the interventions was to promote uh, people to actually access, uh, the, the PLCs to actually access the community rather than people finding uh, a reason to actually go. Uh, I think Shravan has a. Uh, yes. So uh, when you kind of showed us the entire process, mm -hmm. research, you start with an administrative level. Shravan, you're breaking up. Uh, Shravan, you're breaking up. Uh, is it just me? Yeah. 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 Ye
mm-hmm. uh, theater or uh, people who do plays on health or maternal health and these may not be the government themselves but they are ngos who work okay. with the government so do you have any examples like that that you come across that are actually an interface between uh, the civil society organizations and uh, the government uh yes so i came across vnca or uh, uh, the sneha organization when there is mahila vikas samiti so some of the uh, uh, some of these uh, health camps are actually collaborative or sometimes outsourced but like there is one official that accompanies uh, you know for these health camps there is also shruti uh, foundation Also, can you talk about the organization? Mr. Ravan has typed a question. When you started with the presentation, you began with an administrative study. and then on to healthcare and the institution and social studies of healthcare and space so what was the starting point on the study i'm not sure study is the right word but i've lost the word i'm looking for so what is the starting point i uh, what was your motivation i guess yeah i actually started with looking at uh, all the levels of healthcare and things that uh, healthcare com- comprises of and uh, it took me a long time to figure out uh, to focus on primary health care like this is the public health uh, at a larger scale than any other uh, high hierarchy in you know, health care uh, so uh, since i wanted to address the public uh, health health care aspect of it i chose to uh, focus more on uh, the primary uh, The, the primary hospitals and infrastructure that the city provides, uh, but I have I explored uh, other areas of hospitals and very specific uh, uh, roles that other healthcare institutions also carry out. But since my focus was more on public health, uh, this was uh, I, I felt that this was the right way to. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Rucha, um, for that presentation. I think it was very useful. Um, what we'll do is, I think, move. Uh, George is Janela here in the meeting. Yes, yeah, she's she's in the yeah, meeting. Yeah, I'm here. Cool. So, Jane, if you can start your uh, presentation okay. and then. The future. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So uh, just to kind of very quickly tell the class as well is that uh, the second presentation that we are doing today is uh, Janella is going to make one. Um, she and Janella knows that we are putting together these little booklets that every single one of you is putting together a little booklet on your building your argument. Pretty similar to you know what Rucha just did. Like she made you know a bunch of slides that explained her. process and the data that she had of site to arrive upon a project right so all of you all will be making your own and will automatically be creating drawings and stuff like that to do that so what janella is doing is that she's going to talk a little bit about the ways in which uh, books are designed or uh, booklets are designed rather um, to make these arguments so she's she's going to show you some designs of books i think right jen um, you want to start with the present yes Yes, so yeah. I'll be just doing a very quick presentation of uh, some uh, book structures. You can see my screen, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um. So. This uh, first one is uh, by Italo Calvino. Okay, and I, uh, I'm. Some of you may have seen this book. This book is called uh, Invisible Cities, and uh, this is what the index of the book looks like. Um, so if you see here, it's uh, you just have the page numbers on the right hand side, 
and on the left hand side you have uh, these categories which says uh, like if you look here at four it says uh, cities and science five and then uh, you're wondering if why does it say five is there a cities and science uh, three or two somewhere else when then you see over here trading cities three there's uh, trading cities two okay and uh, they're not uh, there in every and these are chapter numbers they're not there in every chapter okay um uh, the uh, so then and then towards the end there is hidden cities one so that it is following some uh, a series uh, through these themes that have been identified okay and uh, this is what uh, the book looks on the inside where uh, it follow it has this it just this as the title it says continuous uh, cities two and then there is um, a write up about it so it is actually only in the index that uh, this book kind of you, you try and start making networks you try try and start making connections through the themes that are there in the uh, index while uh, the book uh, the rest of the book continues on its own um, you know we could say rhythm or it continues it on its own structure um this uh, is another book uh, this is uh, collard city okay the book is titled collard city and uh, the index in this this is what the index looks like it just has one uh, large image okay um, of a model and um, on the right hand side there are these very um, so if you see the book is fairly large it's 185 uh, pages but um, the titles are very uh, simple okay just is introduction utopia uh, and it, and the rest of it continues and you are when you open the index you're kind of uh, there is a curiosity because uh, the title says for large city and then you are uh, presented with this image so the uh, index is also building up uh, interest about what the book may be and uh, when you see this image you think and you can you uh, identify uh, the colosseum here and then you think that probably this book is about rome and uh, this this entire uh, the book discusses rome and uh, the aspect of collage and how things are kind of put together uh, through and through the example of rome okay and that is why uh, so that the titles are very clear and simple it uh, it's uh, like if you say utopia it kind of decline and fall it uh, gives you a, a reference to the history of the city uh then it the crisis of the object it's uh, you're looking at architecture and the urban space and but the index actually becomes the first space uh which actually sets out the tone uh for uh, what the rest of the book uh will be and i think that's why indexes uh, play a very important role uh because they uh tell you what the structure of a book is like okay because uh, the, the way, like there is no um Uh, there is no kind of uh, rule to say or there is nothing to stop you from reimagining what the structure of a book is uh, it can also it, it it can be very simple uh, which just uh, kind of has an introduction uh, the middle or the kind of main component and an ending or a conclusion but how you th this is the overall kind of in, the way information is presented but um, how you choose to actually design the book how you choose to present these three large pieces of information is uh, is something that you can uh, decide and you can kind of play around with um this is another book uh, titled uh, townscapes okay and you see over here this it just says contents very simply it has two it then it kind of breaks up into two components and it the first one says case book and the second one says uh, general studies um again the title uh, becomes very uh, essential or the title suggests what the book is uh, uh, discussing or what the book is describing and uh, when you see this uh, case book and general studies uh, it immediately kind of uh, lets you know that the book is uh, divided into two parts okay there is it is not in if you see the uh, page numbers and you see the titles uh, the subtitles you will realize that it is not equally distributed in uh, and then uh, uh, because this book is titled townscape just uh, kind of trying to look at what the elements uh, of a space are like and uh, uh and that's why the case book has just four components and the studies actually um have cases of um uh, describe kind of spaces much more uh, in much more detail okay 
Um, so this, so for example, this one over here has uh, serial vision, and I thought these pages are also very, uh, you know, nicely designed uh, because they keep each page uh, kind of keeps the, the representation keeps changing. So like this one over here is is kind of discussing um, this uh, in, uh, this kind of uh, topic called serial vision, okay, and it has a short write up uh, what that. Uh, what is uh, what what is serial vision and as well as if you see towards the end it says it's also describing what the drawing or the representation is trying to do okay uh, alongside then you have a plan okay and then very kind of subtly a diagram is kind of uh, embedded in this uh, plan of of an existing place and you just have these arrows okay and you you realize that these arrows are not um, evenly spaced or these arrows and then you you realize that these actually these arrows are uh, exactly at the spot where each of these drawings are made. So and you see over here there is no kind of caption text used at all. Uh, but the page is uh, designed in such a way that uh, describes what serial vision is, and then through the drawing uh, is further kind of illustrating this idea about serial vision. Okay, and then uh, again, uh, uh, this is like I was saying how every page is uh, like because the the, uh, the representation uh, kind of keeps changing. There's drawing somewhere, somewhere there are elevations like you'd see over here, or there are photographs. Okay, and uh, very like over here also the way photographs are used. Okay, you have uh, uh, seven, eight photographs on a page. Okay, usually we tend to kind of make full bleed photographs. Also, you uh, when you're designing a book. Um, you have to think of the image uh, completely, like why am I using a certain drawing or how am I using that certain drawing? It's there is not there is nothing to say that okay that this has to be of a particular size or every or something has to be full bleed or something has to be a series of photographs. Uh, all of these things uh, are also making a, a an argument is also kind of aiding the structure of your. Uh, your volume of this book that you're putting together and how each of these things like drawings, uh, images are contributing to that. OK, it is not to say that, OK, I only have an argument for my design or I have an argument for my project and that is sufficient. The book can also reflect and, how, and even every kind of page can reflect uh, or uh, take forward that argument that you're making overall for your project. OK, uh, this was another interesting one. So here it says uh, plan of Westminster and showing viewpoints. And then you have this curve because this again marks and you just have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it just marks out the different places from where you would get each of these views. Uh, so it also kind of uh, like this is again about uh, serial vision only and then it is showing you like so it, even though it has the plan, it show it kind of uh, the diagram shows how uh, what is the view one would get when they are at these different points. Um, this is uh, this this is the index of uh, SML Excel, OK, by uh, Bruce Mao and uh, Rem Kulas. OK, and uh, this is uh, this this uh, this is uh, the. The book has like the title says SML Excel. OK, you have four indexes that happen as um, they, they kind of form categories. OK, like of course, because like SML Excel are also categories. The index also is not uh, is kind of split across like this. So you have an S uh, as a watermark, OK, which kind of suggests the projects or uh, you know the other references uh, that are there as part of the book. Uh, they, uh, they're categorized as S and then similarly you will have it for M and L and Excel. Now the index is designed as uh, a double spread. OK, so on the left hand side you have these terms. OK, uh, anagram, analogy, you can see your Android angelic and they're just terms that are discussed. OK, uh, which leaves you wondering that what is the connection? Are you supposed to read it? Uh, with these titles, if you if you see here, they are the pro their project titles. Um, again, the project titles, like if you look at over here, there is edible. Okay, then you have typical plan, and then you have project names. So these uh, this this book follows uh, uh, this like uh, it, it follows a structure similar to that of jazz, where you have 
or riff, okay, which is a, is a thing that kind of keeps coming in at uh, certain points, but the rest of it is free flowing and is open and um, is also allows you to interpret and kind of and through intuition mainly. So if you see the uh, rest of the pages in the book, uh, they somewhere there's collage, somewhere there are uh, letters that are uh, printed exactly in its true form. Uh, somewhere they're just uh, a constellation of words. OK, so each again, each page is different uh, depending on what is being discussed and uh, what. Um, so it's not like even though there are uh, like if you see here in the index, you see that there are a list of projects. It's not everywhere that you have it uh, typically saying that this is the ground floor plan, first floor plan or sections. You don't have a complete drawing set somewhere. The drawings are very small. Um, also within the book, OK, uh, the orientation keeps changing. I don't have any images of this uh, right here, but uh, also the orientation keeps changing, which requires the reader to turn. So like every uh, somewhere so it will be at a complete 90 degree turn, which will uh, either require you to uh, kind of turn your neck or turn the book completely to see what it is. So this there it's very uh, interactive in that way uh, that requires you to keep kind of looking. Nothing is uh, standard in that sense. Nothing. Uh, it, it requires you to be immersed when you are uh, reading the book. Uh, this is a uh, tactical city. This is uh, Rupali Gupte's master's thesis. Um, and uh, so this is uh, what the opening page of her uh, volume looks like. If, uh, on the left is something of an acknowledgement where she's acknowledging, acknowledging different people. And uh, of course, somewhere it's a conversation. Uh, somewhere it's a straightforward statement. Uh, the index, on the other hand, uh, does not describe what the contents are at all. It very clear, just simply just takes the title. So it says contents, abstract, acknowledgements, introduction, methodology. Okay, and you see how it splits because when you come to stories, okay, you suddenly start seeing Tenali Rama, Tenali Rama, Tenali in the colonial city, and you're wondering that if it's like a there is straightforward text on one side and uh, the the index then splits suddenly and then you have this thing being introduced. It again creates a curiosity to know what this is about. OK, and uh, the the uh, volume also her book also is similar where um, the first parts which were introduction of okay, she writes uh, some parts in first person. OK, and um, these are accompanied by maps and drawings, but uh, then uh, it's only in the uh, at the part of the methodology. OK, there's a small kind of uh, graphic come up about a comic strip from the Tenali Rama uh, comic series, and uh, that is when also she introduces the character as a way to read the city. OK, and uh, there on. Uh, sorry. And of course, there is the intervention, which was a very uh, different type of intervention. But uh, you can uh, this is also to show you that how if you use, um, uh, you know, very kind of uh, simple text, which is his introduction, the pages themselves can be very different. It's also important to think of what you're introducing where. Uh, OK, like the the book is not like a, is not just a random compilation of everything that you have collected. The every kind of uh, page, every diagram is it has to be thought of that why you're putting what you're putting there. OK, it, it is not just to say that, OK, this was the process I followed and hence I'm going to use it in this order. Uh, you can also think of size of images like here. If you see on the left hand side, there's a it's a it's a there's a lot of white space and the drawing this also like, you know, you think of how you want to use white space. Um, you can uh, think of the graphic like uh, it, it, sometimes it can be too crowded, you know, like then you're, you think of the amount of text you're putting along with uh, uh, with an image. Uh, both should be kind of uh, legible. Otherwise, if you put too much text, uh, too many, you crowd it with too many graphics. They're not uh, very easy to read. Of course, sometimes it can be intentional Okay, that you make a you kind of populate a page with a lot of graphics. And that will require the, the reader or your intended audience to engage with uh, the book in a very different way. So think about uh, every kind of page of what you're doing. There is no kind of thing that says that there should be a fixed number of pages that qualifies as um, you know, a good book or an, uh, or an academic book or a project or something like that. 
it, it, it is essential for you to determine uh, what your uh, book is or how large your book is, depending on what is the information and what is the argument that you want to uh, put across. OK, uh, this is uh, another book. It's uh, called uh, The Adventures of T.S. Trivet, some a uh, very lovely book. OK, and uh, this book again has three parts, OK, uh, four parts, east, west, north, south. So the cardinal directions are used and um, every kind of uh, section or segment in the book is uh, so you know it's a new section or a new segment uh, because this map uh, there's a drawing uh, there is this uh, legend that is put in and you know then it's a new segment okay um this is the first so this is this is what this is how the page is designed okay you have a story that is uh, happening over here which is uh, in double space text and uh, on and the book is kind of split uh, sorry the page is split into two margins the margin on the left is uh, wider than the margin on the right okay uh, so the margin on the right almost becomes uh, like a space for field notes that or you know like notes if, like like you remember in school sometimes uh, we used to in the margins we used to make notes smaller notes for calculations sometimes this book uh, the pages over here are like that so the uh, right hand um, margin becomes a space where uh, these kind of drawings are made where and uh, sometimes they're connected uh, to the uh, story that is kind of or the narrative that is continuing in the left margin Okay, uh, and and this uh, like this, this there, it's it's a story of this boy who lives on a ranch. Okay, and uh, he has a lot of free time, so he goes about mapping everything in a lot of detail. And we understand that when we see this left, uh, sorry, the right margin, like over here, he's found a sparrow skeleton. Okay, and uh, he's drawn it on a grid. He's put so you can also think of uh, when when you want to use margins uh, within or you know two kind of columns in on a page uh, it's usually used when you want like one when there is one kind of text that is following its own narrative but you feel that uh, some kind of details need to be given and if you put those details within the main text it would disrupt the flow of the text and that is when you use this uh, uh, second column where you you can explain things without uh, breaking the narrative of that is kind of running through the entire book OK, uh, so somewhere like this, somewhere a drawing. Uh, so the margin, so you see here, this is on some other pages from the book. The margins uh, uh, continue, or the columns continue throughout the uh, book. Somewhere they're not, you don't write anything. A, a larger kind of drawing comes up. Somewhere just a little uh, kind of uh, little text, which is an advertisement probably, or a ticket, or you know, some things like that. So it's not, if, if it's not everywhere that it is always, uh, uh, that you have a lot of detail always. Uh, this is uh, building stories, and I'm sure a lot of you must have seen this book in the library. It's uh, it comes in a box, and there and it and there are different books of different sizes and different forms. Uh, this is just one drawing from that, which opens out as a large board book. You know, like almost like these uh, like board games. It opens out like a large board, and if you see here, the drawing is very interesting. Because uh, it uses the uh, like the, it's largely a graphic novel, uh, but uh, and it's the same view that is used in all four frames. And we realize that uh, there is time that is being communicated when we see a small thing, which is this tree. And you see the tree here is without leaves, and the tree is green. Then there's probably autumn and spring. So. Uh, so the, you can even communicate uh, very kind of small changes through very subtle references. OK, and by each of these stories, because it's a graphic novel, each of these stories um, have their own kind of um, uh, like kind of threads, narratives that are going on without actually. So but the view, you keep the view standard. The view does not change and uh, any and kind of each story is uh, is kind of uh, continuing in the same building like the name suggests building stories it is uh, describing uh, what is happening in the building with people and the space um, through these different forms somewhere there is uh, something some one place one is designed like a newspaper one is another one is designed 
like a manual, you know, like an instruction manual. So there are these different uh, even forms that are used of drawing uh, to uh, in this kind of uh, in this uh, box set of this uh, building stories. OK, uh, then uh, I'm just going to show you some uh, magazines. Uh, these were uh, by Archigram. OK, Archigram um, came out with a series of nine or ten uh, kind of magazines, and each of them uh, were designed differently. This is the very first one. It's called Paper One. This was very simple. This was more of a pamphlet than a magazine, really. OK, and uh, that's why you will see over here it says so this was just so just this just had to be folded. This is uh, it was a large piece of paper that uh, you know, like a pamphlet uh, had a fold um, and you could just open it out and read it. There was a lot of text uh, uh, depending on what they wanted to uh, uh, about what they wanted to discuss. Um, is in it uh, embedded in it is also a title. So you can also uh, kind of uh, play around with how you want to um, you know, put up your title, how you want to, uh, how does your image and your text come together? Uh, like this one here, because this form is like this, the text also kind of goes into these curves. Um, also, um, uh, somewhere where, where, how you want to put it as a diagram, which goes as a sentence. Okay, we just see some um, by Archigram. This is, this was the third one, okay? And uh, these are three different pages. OK, if you see uh, the first one very clearly starts out, it says discussion and then it has somewhat of an index because it says on other pages two problem, three groundwork, four projects, five acceptance. And uh, in this one you see here uh, corresponding to this index of sorts, uh, this strip on the right uh, kind of uses the same words that were mentioned on the first page. So there, if there's groundwork, there's groundwork here, there's projects, okay, projects again are, is in uh, a kind of also font size, you know, font size can also be used as a design uh, thing, like which becomes larger, what becomes smaller, because you have to remember that all the time the readers are not like the like reading is also a very kind of interactive kind of activity. Now, uh, if it's very tiny text, it would require someone to come really close to the page or if it's very large, uh, that is going to dominate uh, what the, what uh, is going to dominate the page. And that's the first thing that you're going to see. So even font size can be used um, uh, to uh, in, a, in a way that uh, can help uh, with uh, your project. This is the fourth one, Zoom, and uh, this was designed as a graphic novel. So uh, uh, this was also interesting because uh, this is what the page looks like. Okay, this is when it's becoming more of a magazine. There are much more pages, and you see how from the first it was a pamphlet, which was just a kind of you know uh, single uh, double side, a single uh, double sided page. And this is around sixteen or I think eighteen pages, if I'm not mistaken. So this uh, this this kind of uh, fourth volume is uh, is a graphic novel, uh, and the and the pages uh, on the inside look like this. Okay, it's designed with you have text kind of call out uh, boxes, and uh, there is a graphic and drawing, and it ends with this thing. Okay, so it, it stops at one point. It has these things which says science fiction. It has capsule tubes, wheels, bubbles, and then this zoom, which is also the name of the issue. And then after this, it uh, gets into architecture. It's not like to say that the architecture is not being discussed earlier, but that's when uh, they are kind of projects and designs are uh, discussed further. OK. Uh, this is the seventh one. It's called Ghosts and Phantoms. Um, so it had like a split uh, kind of some some were print, uh, printed as ghosts, some as phantoms. And uh, this is what the cover. So the cover page also you see how color is used. Now the cover page is like black and white, while the inside then takes a color and just uh, you know white with just one color. Um, it's uh, designed uh, again like a manual because they want to look at plugin uh, like the side of the plugin. So it it has the set of instructions. It's it also has. Um, uh, uh, something something like market research and saying that you know you send it in with your name etc. While uh, so they are also uh, thinking of different ways of engaging uh, with uh, the audience or the people who are reading these um, magazines. Okay, uh, this was another one. 
uh, again, how like timelines, and I just kind of put this in to show how uh, timelines could are constructed. Uh, the timelines just do not always have to be text. You can use very minimal text. You can use diagrams. So again, uh, we heard this was an interesting graphic. So uh, this um, this timeline actually opens up. So you also see the size of the page. It's much longer. You want the entire timeline to appear. So you're selecting a page size. Uh, that will accommodate everything. So page size is also something you can think of. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, very large books may become unwieldy. Sometimes they're very essential because of, uh, you know, what you're drawing, what you're communicating. Uh, some of it can also be like fold outs that you maintain a, uh, the, a size that is, uh, you know, much smaller, but because of, uh, one drawing, like a timeline, for example, can become a page that folds out. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, I think, the second last one. And uh, uh, again, this was about uh, landscape. So this is the cover. And then on the inside, you see that how some things are um, uh, kind of printed just the way they are. So and it says letter from a friend. Uh, then there are some kind of uh, diagrams which look like a kind of which are calculations, looks like a, a sheet. So you can also think of the form and th this is this is like on a double spread. So you can see how both of them are, you know, like kind of lie next to each other. Are they kind of uh, making a uh, making an argument when you're using different formats, different forms of a same uh, project or space? Do they then kind of also just by being there next to each other or, um, you know, uh, on consecutive pages? Do they actually um, does does that lead to something else? Is a reader able to read something more from that? And uh, these are also another form of books, and these are pop up books. Okay, uh, they you can think of pop up books of um, how you want to make arguments, uh, whether the form represents sometimes the structure, whether uh, it it will like it kind of uh, like this one over here. Um, you have on the left hand side you have like because it's split it's kind of divided into five uh, segments and each of them have something coming out uh, there is each there is a story that they that or there is a narrative that they have within each segment and the book overall also it's also the like these acts of how you're opening how you're folding uh, that will um, also create uh, some interest some argument of why you're opening certain pages uh, why or the order in which you open these pages. OK, uh, this one on the uh, right hand is this uh, like you see it, it's like the inside of a bathroom. What is like what is a pop up? What comes out? There's also kind of interactive things like this, like you know, which you can pull and push. Um, so so this is also possible. Or, you know, we or this one, um, which is um, the, the elevation of a railway station and like a first week, so somewhere you see a plan, somewhere you uh, you pull out a card which gives you like a fact sheet. Uh, so these are also possibilities um, when you're designing a book. Okay, yeah, I think this is it. Yes. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, does anyone have anything to ask, say? Questions? There's just an observation I wanted to make, Janela, that yeah, was just know. delightful. Thank you. Uh, yes, I, I think what this, the class really should look at is the fact that every single page engages the attention of the reader. So when you say you can crowd everything into five pages or you can say I can stretch it out into 30 pages. It's a very big decision as to what goes on every page because that's your scope of vision. And each of the examples that Janela gave us was very, very beautifully calibrated, whether it had one piece of information or 100 pieces of information. It was a choice made by the, the illustrator, the book designer, and it held us in different ways. So I think that's something you need to really think about when you make your book. Yeah. Any anyone else? Uh, Thanks, Janelle. I think great presentation. And I think uh, to extend what Mandana was saying, also it's um, 
you know the design of the book is uh, like you design a project like you know you will follow the same processes saying okay what is the information i have to communicate and what are the various options and different ways i can do it and you just do like sketch drafts okay just uh, you know on the computer or yourself and then you compare those drafts you see which one works best and then you kind of structure it say that okay now uh, what is the scale of the drawing in each of these what is the kind of the text and then you kind of get into it and then you again zoom out so the same process of zooming in zooming out that you kind of do in architecture that's the same thing where you have an idea of the overall structure you look at options you you mock them out you just do a mock up you know quick mock ups to compare okay this is one way to do it second way third way decide on one way and then you will have uh, content that you will add in again you zoom out see it does it fit together so that whole process is a design process you know so that has to be understood and it's a very important whether it's a booklet whether it's a even a panel like you know when you guys put together drawings on a panel it's the same process you know you have yeah. to kind of uh, you treat it as an important design uh, process keep enough time for it and uh, you know uh, uh, invest in it uh, very seriously it's, it's it's an important matter of communicating uh without you being there you know otherwise we we need to kind of you need to give a voice over and your book has to work without that voice over yeah your book your panels have to work without the voice over and uh, you know working online i think that gets more and more important you know so you guys really need to i think this was a great presentation thanks thanks so much thank you and i'm i'm just to add to that also what juju saying and also to connect between what rucha did uh, showed showed us and also what janela right now <clears throat> explained to us the uh, whole uh, the, the 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 argument structuring uh, is uh, such an important thing and uh, and like uh, i think uh, uh, shravan was the one who was saying that oh you started with the administration and then you did that so what was your starting point i mean i think you go you go you go full gun blaze in the, in the beginning try and get an entry point okay and 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 find a way that okay there is a there is a particular entry point that you would probably want to engage with okay and then uh, the structuring of the argument is born out of that engagement and i feel i feel i feel the the output uh, uh, as jude's jude mentioned that be it the book or be it the panel the form of that is embedded in that engagement so so it's important for all of us to uh, realize that and and consciously do that because then because we are now will be beginning to uh, write our own kind of scripts write our own kind of intents uh, there is a larger note to the studio okay but uh, within that each of you all have your own kind of uh, ways of seeing and structuring and and forming an argument and that's an important and this, so the form is born out of it so it's not the other way around that kuch bana diya and then you start filling things you know we're trying to say that there is there is a particular kind of a structure to this and that structure is uh, and we are at the threshold of that okay so yeah so uh, that's what i wanted to add to what jude and vandana was saying uh, thanks janela thank you thanks okay. um thanks jin uh, for that presentation um i think now we'll move on to the next part of the uh, tried of presentations that we have today and it's a little bombardment uh, but we felt it was important to do this bombardment now because we have gotten so far over the past yeah. i guess two weeks uh, one and a half week really a sense of your own neighborhoods and you all are beginning to in some sense uh, start articulating in your minds what you would like to happen what are the kinds of things that you are discovering within but like i said earlier remember that this semester is also about learning how to build an argument and the book form is the one that we are using in this we produce panel for movies we use many different forms but we decided because it's an online semester we decided to use the book form as a model making that argument and you know showing you that arguments can be made in all these incredible different ways uh, you know can be made in all these different languages as well uh, and uh, let us not even be perhaps limited to the english language maybe there could be other languages itself that can and that can be all of the way that arguments are made um we are hoping to at the end of this month have an incredible set of books you know all these incredible books 
there are in many ways a portrait of how healthcare is being accessed and how healthcare is being delivered, both uh, in different parts of the country through you guys, and through the architecture within which we access healthcare. That's our ambition in life. Huh? Uh, but what I'm going to do now is I think what we've done is that we made a quick sort of collection of drawings because so much of architectural uh, argument making is actually made through the act of drawing. And we very often kind of think about the drawing in, you know, using the, as architects, we think about it in two terms, either it's the sketch, okay, or it's the cartographic drawing, the plan sections, elevations. Those are, of course, are incredible ways of making arguments and they're beautiful ways of understanding the world as well. Uh, but, you know, the one of drawing itself is, um, is, is far broader and uh, far more exciting, I think, than, um, than we know. So what we did is that very quickly collected um, a series of drawings, um, you know, we kind of added it into a PowerPoint. Google slide share, they call it, and the slide share. So I'm going to stay, share screen and we'll go over uh, some of them quite quickly. Um, just to kind of, you know, kind of bombard you, as, as I said a little earlier, with the different kinds of possibilities that exist. And then for you guys to start thinking about what is it that you would like to do? What are the languages of drawing? What are the languages of argument making? What are the languages of book design that will best suit not only what you are interested in kind of poetry, but of course what the argument you're trying to make is about. Uh, so I'm going to just very quickly share uh, this, share my screens. Um, do let me know if you can see the screen. You can? Yeah, we can. Yep. Oh, oops. And it went away too, no? Yeah. Hmm. So um, I'll start off with, with paintings like these. These are kind of traditional imaginations of um, descriptions, right? This is painting as description. This is, of course, the painting. Rohan, the, you want to agenda. present the screen? Sorry, Rohan, you want to make it big? So oh, sorry, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'm so sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how do you do top that right. in this software? Present, present. Yeah, yeah. On top, right? Yeah, got it. Next to Can show. you guys see it now? Just a yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this, for example, is uh, is a painting from Ajanta. And what, what is unique about, uh, about these miniature paintings, they, these paintings, these are not miniatures, these paintings in particular, is the fact that an entire story is told in one plane. Huh? So you have a character of the Buddha that begins on one end of these of the walls because these are murals right on the walls and begins on one end, and you can follow the story as you see the same character who is identified by certain kinds of headdress and certain kinds of physical characteristics you can identify that character across the different sorts of positions and follow in many ways a narrative that emerges within that kind of large plane itself uh, the other thing of course is the way that the the space itself is presented as a sort of a folded out elevation, if you want to call it that, where there's a constant, uh, where there's no vanishing point. Right? The vanishing point that we have very often in conventional perspective uh, is completely negated. It is completely denied until what you get is actually this elevation upon which these bodies are performing different acts and the postures of the bodies themselves and the costumes of the bodies themselves now begin to represent what they are meant to be, what they are meant to represent. Uh, you have something similar with the kind of idea of the disappearing uh, perspective lines in uh, folk artists. Like this is a tribal uh, kind of uh, painting by a Warli, what's called a Warli, it's called a Warli painting by the Warli tribe, which is which is native to this part of uh, the country. And again, here you see that there's iconographies, um, you know, of trees that are there. Each of these trees, you know, that these three species are one. You know that that this is another species. You have people who are celebrating again, as if the ground and the sky, there is no sky, no? there's only ground. No? Or is there a sky? Does this line in some sense determine that the space above this could be sky? No? Because there's an elevation and plan that is constantly being oscillated between. And these figures themselves, although they look like fairly generic figures are uh, because of the actions, because of what they're holding, start performing different roles within that plane. The same technique is used by Mughal miniature paintings. And over here, you see the fact that if you look at the space below, this is almost a plan. It's a plan that's folded out where you can see these steps coming up. And then you have this plane that's there. Again, it's a plan that's been put up, but the people sitting on it are in some sort of axonometric to use kind of conventional cartographic terms. Uh, and you have these sorts of isometric sorts of images here. So it's a, it's, it is all these different uh, perspectival and uh, cartographic tools that have been uh, used in different ways 
to represent the space itself and the different layers of it. If they had chosen only one, let's say only the elevation of the plant, one would perhaps not get a three-dimensional sense of what the nature of the space is like. The other thing that is also kind of distorted because of the very fact that perspective itself is distorted is scale. Is, is sorry. Is, is that within this within within the within the uh, image itself, you get different scales that are working simultaneously at the same time. And you see that sort of technique in many sorts of artists. Uh, that is, again, this is again a mural from the fort at Bundi, where you see this temple that is completely folded out. And you are able to see the temple's walls and its relationships back to the outside, the way that one would enter the temple and how the temple itself is sitting and the, and the shrines that are encircling it. <laughs> Another image from the uh, fort at Bundi, again, uh, you see the central figures here and you see the uh, concentric walls that are that are that are around it, and of course the figures themselves are depicting some sort of important event that is happening, <laughs> and uh, the different spaces that are the celestial worlds, terrestrial worlds, underground world, or is this aquatic aquatic worlds? All of these together, yeah. and you know architects have also used miniature uh, paintings very often to describe projects that they've done. This is of course a drawing by B. V. Doshi. Uh, where you are able to see him learning from traditional miniature and folk paintings to be able to arrive upon the description of this particular building. Again, plan sections, elevation, taxonometrics, all together uh, forming this entire plane. This was a technique that we also learned from uh, two years back or three years back now, when we were looking at trying to describe uh, on the third year study trip, the. Uh, um, events that lay along the pilgrimage route in uh, Mathura, in, in sorry, in Braj. And if you see, this was one of the one of the drawings that was done by them. We made around, I think it was about hundred drawings like these, uh, where you have actually the space is folded out to reveal in plans and elevations and sections, you know, similar to miniature paintings to reveal the layers of the space. And within it, we had all these different bodies that were populating the spaces, doing certain activities. And along with each of these panels, there was a little booklet. And in each of those booklets, there was a little description of the place, which is in this case, Vishram Ghat, and uh, enlargements of the of the drawing to show uh, what were the different activities that were important to this. So the the, Bram, the, the kind of Brahmin sitting somewhere, or uh, or the rituals performed on the water, etc. This, this, this so similarly, we did many of these. I'm just showing them to you because, well, kind of, you know, partly because they're pretty. Uh, some more drawings from the same uh, set. And also I'm showing these to you because these were done by students who are, well, almost your contemporary. Uh, um, you know, this same this one semester here and there. Yeah. So the other technique that, we, that that is an interesting technique to think about when is when one is looking at representing space, time and event within a plane is, of course, the idea of the comic book. Um, and uh, Janelle already showed you the work of Chris Ware, um, whose books are incredible just in the way that they collapse space, time and event together in the comic book form. What is interesting about the comic book form is that it can splice together different scales of space as well as different scales of time simultaneously within one plane. What like for example, like what this does, for example, you know, an image like this, which begins with the, I guess, a drawing of the house. Uh, and then it, uh, it's asking you now to read the drawing like a working drawing. So here you see this ring, there's a red telephone. He's enlarging the telephone and as he enlarges, he actually goes inside the house. And when he's going inside the house, if you look at it now, he's again zooming out from the telephone and you can watch this woman who's sitting here while the phone is ringing. And there is a hearing aid that she's wearing in her ear, but the hearing aid is not working, right? Then you have a telephone wire. The telephone wire, which is where the ringing is coming from, right? Is now followed across the landscape Right? And you are able to, in that sense, run across this entire thing and find out that it is son, that it is her son who's calling. Because you see this from this image, you see this little kind of half open door. You go inside the door, you go inside the room. Inside the room, you see a mantelpiece. On the mantelpiece, on uh, on the mantelpiece, you see a bit. You see a little photograph, uh, and you see that there. You see the uh, an enlargement of the photograph. In the photograph, you see there is a guy. There's a hand. Uh, there's a, 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 the woman's hand and there's another child's hand. That other child's hand moves in here. The other child's hand is growing older. He comes inside here. The older man's hand is holding up a telephone. Somewhere far away, 
and is making a call to her right so you see the fact that there's a whole narrative that is just simply encapsulated within one simple image and i'm not even getting into the other stories that this drawing is telling for example there's this entire story of a marriage etc so he does these things all the time where he's constantly with removal of images and by the constant moving of space and time he's able to kind of fill in narratives and very very architectural narratives because he uses often very conventional architectural drawing techniques like elevations like axonometrics like plans he uses them and then within that by the insertion of different sorts of spaces and times he's able to build entire stories i'm not going to take you through these stories because it will just take forever more stories another image by chris ware which i find lovely is this one which actually is see, is seems to be four what what four three twelve different images but actually this is just one large image of one place across different times so you have for example uh, a half a century earlier the only place to secret yourself around here or behind and this is this house when it was under construction and this is the house after it was constructed it's as if the same image has been spliced across 12 different frames in 12 different times that could be you know millions of years i'm sorry millions yeah, actually could even be millions of years apart hmm? <sighs> more images by him in this case i just wanted to show it because of the way that the elevation and the axonometric of a house are used to be able to tell stories this building stories which is i'll be showing The other thing that is interesting about the comic book form, I'm only going to show it again um, this way, is you have the way that time can be stretched and time can be collapsed uh, within the way that frames are designed. So you have this long frame that becomes a way for us to see where this person is sitting. Then you have the same act of simply something eating, something dropping, him going, and he's cleaning and he's wiping, and then you see the empty thing. So you see the way that. within this you see the time itself stretch out okay on the other hand the move from here to the men's room is just very quick right so from here he goes to the men's room the men's room door is opening you see the fact that when the door opens you see the thickness of the men's sign okay? and then cut directly to here so the time between this moment and this is cut very quickly but the time after that as he's sitting again reading that little note etc you know become stretched just because of the time that that kind of number of frames that are given to that particular moment on the other hand you have like an image like this uh, which is not chris ware uh, but you see what's happening in this you have this wild sort of violence that's happening or this car that's hurtling down rapidly down this uh, sort of uh, slope right and what you have here is that within each of these frames that are kind of literally like little bullets tuck, 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 that are running across in at, in these kind of shots you have actually many many different details of different things that could be happening within here some of them tell a story like this is a this is a tooth that's a, a spectacle you know that's been kind of thrown out there right? here's something similar that's happening here as well like this kind of animal is kind of jumping at that you have two eyes you have this entire way in which the frames themselves create a mood of dynamism and at and at the same time also are used Uh, to describe different aspects of exactly what is happening in this particular movie another incredible way in which the frame is used is this one where it's from the same comic book where you have somebody who's jumping and actually the activity that are the, the frames that are usually horizontally against the plane of the paper now are placed perspectively so you have the same actor or the same action of let's say this man who's actually going through tuck 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 going through the plane as times so each of these is literally like a millisecond of time that is represented as a frame the frame just as a describer you see the way that a, like a sheet can be used right? the way that the sheet is itself divided into many different kinds of grids and frames and each of these is then used to describe perhaps different aspects of uh, sometimes it's just text sometimes it's a dialogue box sometimes it's just an image sometimes just to caption so all these different aspects you are allowed to kind of represent it in the space including you know a pencil an elevation of the empire street building whatever those may be now i'm just going to show you some work that was done at the master studio uh, in the first semester uh, these are some drawings these are actually gifs uh, unfortunately because this google slide share couldn't show you the gifs uh, but actually these were interested in describing the activities that happen inside a train compartment across the day so you have here for example you know the people sitting so there's a there's an effort at showing one cubicle within the train 
and then describing in as much detail as in the way that the postures of different bodies inhabit that space, whether that's in plan or whether that's in elevation. So while the drawings themselves are straightforward cartographic um, sort of uh, projections, uh, including let's say a, a drawing like this that is really kind of laying laying it out, flattening it out the entire compartment, you have all of these different sorts of actors and the bodies that they're working with. and how different. So like, well, this is how people cluster around the window. This is how people cluster around the pole. This is how people cluster around the door, like how every element of the building enables certain kinds of actions within the bodies of people that inhabit. It. Another drawing, which is far more in that sense, a, a conventional drawing, but an important one as well, which is looking at root of movement. So here you have, you know, this is the RTO in, uh, in I think uh, Andheri, <clears throat> where through kind of an icon here, you see the green person is supposed to be some labor, the red person is supposed to be formal employees. And then you can follow the route as they are moving in and out of the exploded iconometric of the building. And then they can be, each of these are then described in terms of what they are, what is happening there, or who this person is. And this, what you're seeing on the left is an ab abstraction where they remove only the roots of movement away from the actual architecture of the place. So this can also become a mode through which one is able to, to, to splice together uh, time, activity, as well as architecture from the same uh, box. <clears throat> another, another kind of description, this is also a booklet that was made by, these, uh, by, by a group, which was a fold-out booklet. And they were interested in looking at the way that people live within the Gautan in Pali, Pali or the village in, uh, in Bandra. So uh, what they did is that they built a drawing like this, which is, you know, you have a little plan here, which is this movement that's there and you see the village of Pali. And what they did is that they literally built a sort of walk that meanders across the entire page. And in that meandering, they keep highlighting and they make a simple black and white sketches, perhaps even tracings of photographs that make up the entire panel. And then they highlight certain elements of what they are seeing in that red that they're using and then have little text descriptions of exactly what's happening in each of these different kinds of moments. <laughs> yeah. uh, so there's an approximation of this route that actually make, that actually finds its way into the way that the plan of this works. Like for example, this is the primary square uh, and the buildings around it that exist here. So there is a way in which space and time are again, an event are being uh, kind of shown within one. one right? Another image from the same study, uh, a more detailed area cluster. So while the other one was looking at the larger area, this one is looking at a smaller cluster within so that you get more details and more finer grain understandings of things. So the comic, of course, is, a, is, is one of those modes that is able to kind of put together space and time, but I don't want to spend too much time on this as well. It's just these are images that I had. But the other extreme of, um, of an analytical diagram is where <clears throat> we are interested in actually just comparative data. Um, and that is also a very valid mode of making representations where one is looking at, you know, uh, relative sizes of things, time scales of things, movements of things, where then physical, maybe tangible information can sometimes get a little bit kind of, um, how should I put, distracting. So there is this attempt here to kind of remove as much information until all that you get is the basic uh, fundamental movements of things that are there. This was a drawing that a group had done to analyze Malwani village and the activity of fishing. So what you have here actually is that these red lines and yellow lines are roots of different kinds of people. Okay. The circles, each of them are, them are spaces that this person goes into. And the circle actually maps what happens across the day in that particular time. So this is like a, this is like 6 p.m. and 5 p.m. etc. So you are able to, so these are like, it, it, these are actually the cycles of movement. Uh, that are being represented in an analytical plan like this. So you are able to see this in a little more closely. So people sort fish, unload catch across the time. So this is the annual cycle of what happens during a thing. And then from there, you can connect across to other things. Another kind of drawing is, of course, the bird's eye view. Uh, this is a bird's eye view of uh, Vasai Fort. It's not exactly an exact perspective. Uh, it's a distorted imagination of it to reveal, like in the miniature painting, to reveal the space more. But it's more accurately perspective uh, because it is done on a computer. Now, what you what they did is that they then lifted off narratives from different spaces uh, to tell stories of different places and people within it. They also lifted off different species of trees that exist. So this then became it was a huge sheet. Obviously, that is another matter 
um, but uh, this was a way. This was a way in which they chose to make a representation of um, the same. Yeah, you can see some of the details uh, that were there. Uh, this is a student of mine. She was interested in looking at. He's a student. She was interested in looking at the similar to the Bana, uh, Braj thing, but she was interested in showing the locations that happen happen in Banaras on the uh, route of the pilgrimage. So she mapped all these routes and. For thesis, she went to every single one of these. And to draw, she decided to be inspired by Bernard Shumi, an architect, who's done this book called The Manhattan Transcripts. And what he does within The Manhattan Transcripts is he takes an event and divides it into three things that meet each other, a body, the space, and the activity. So what he does is that this is the first is the body, the second is the space, and the third is the activity or the movement, that's what he calls it. And he then analyzes every single part of any every single uh, place through these three aspects. So what Pooja did is another drawing from uh, from the Manhattan transcripts. What Pooja did is that she decided to use that method to start thinking about the different activities that happen along the route. So the first image, so she marks, she takes a plan of, of, of Banaras, marks out the location, gives it a title, and then says it's Manikarnika. And then says, okay, this is the space and the movement itself where that is happening. This is the body as it's doing it. And this is the way that the space actually exists. You see the fact that there are three different ways of seeing the same simple act of starting the pilgrimage with a prayer to the sun. Yeah. And she keeps doing this over and over again so that the model of drawing stays the same. But through this entire uh, process, she's able to build an argument of all the different kinds of more, uh, larger and smaller architectures and the bodies that are performing uh, rituals all along this route. And she has little notes that give histories of the place. Another kind of drawing, again, back to the purely analytical, is one that is, uh, I mean, this is Rem Kulas's uh, famous drawing of the Seattle Public Library. And over here, it's again, you know, another sort of extreme way of abstraction, where what he's doing really is that he is, look at these, this drawing, look at this on the left, like this is an architectural drawing. It's an architectural drawing that is purely looking at how he is, how program is being understood by him in the design of this project. And if you see what he's doing here, he's taking the, the program as by a use type, then he is saving from precise measurement of something, and then he's reshuffling those. So he's constantly kind of working with kind of intermingling support programs with the rest of the uh, with the rest of the architecture. And that is really then what leads to the way that the building itself also which also then evolves, and these are diagrams, right? These are diagrams that are very simply just showing the primary organizational systems that he has for the uh, building itself. In fact, it's even more apparent in a drawing like this, which really takes uh, that section, this is the section, and then starts uh, kind of putting words in there that represent the kinds of activities that happen in each of these different places. So, for example, within this zone, which is the reading area, you have narrative, mapping, meeting, studying, reading, views, information that inhabit uh, this entire space. In the headquarters, everybody who's sitting in there, for example, headquarters, creative directors, e librarian, <coughs> and the roof terrace. But these are you know, simply using words in, in intelligent ways to describe something. I mean, words in some senses are an abstraction of what we are, what we live in. Uh, so that can also become a way in which one can diagram or make arguments or even represent, um, you know, a certain phenomenon. Um, this is uh, Vishal. You want to take this? Just, Vishal, you need a hand. Just that bow yeah. thing. I'll go from the next one. Yeah. Okay. So this is by this artist called Samir Pulavur, and he's made this book called Blue, which basically just a series of sketches, but highlighting. Uh, the use of tarpaulin. So that's why the highlighted parts, the blues, are just like how people are using tarpaulin sheets for shade or for rain or, you know, hoardings, different things. So can you go to the next one? Yeah, this is how, you know, throughout the city, he's just going around traveling and seeing and noticing things, how the sheets are used. So even like from the rich to the poor, Antilla is also covered to protect from rain during the monsoons. So, but just by the use of this one single material, which he's kind of highlighting through, I think, all these sketches. Could you go to the next one? And also, if you even just look at slums, how like the roof is often covered by tarpaulin sheets, a very cheap 
uh, you know, way to waterproof your house, like just put it over it so the water doesn't come in and how the roofscape kind of then just becomes a series of these blue squares floating in space. Uh, next. This is an uh, artist called Carlos Tanga and what he does is he's just documenting architectural spaces. There's New York and he's just highlighting those fire escapes which you often see in a lot of these movies and it's just how thin flimsy they are and it's a it's a it's an over a, it's a overpowering element throughout that city right so it's kind of representing that uh, could you go next and this is just a series of activities which he sees for happening throughout central park so that people like lounging reading books socializing the animals around drones around kind of representing the character of that open space over there now next and this is a map of, I mean, I think New Amsterdam, which is uh, New York, I think earlier on. So it's about houses, farms, and like how the sea comes in and the forest area on top, you know, on the side, which kind of shows different spatial characters. The way he's represented it, the style he's used is also quite interesting. And the next one is just Mario Miranda showing the chaotic space, you know, like a restaurant area, like how many different people are using it, the kind of hoardings, you know, um, which kind of show how vibrant that space is. So it's about um, sometimes just picking out these small details and representing them or also just highlighting them, you know, but the thing is to figure out what the intent of each drawing is. And once you have that, then you can figure out different styles to represent that. And these are some of these overall. I mean, we're just trying to show different styles about how to go about that. Yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, I'll just I'll just talk about the Bawa ones a little bit. Yeah, you see, like you see in this drawing, right? Now this is a large kind of um, map of some certain place, but within that you have actually. Um, different scales that are working simultaneously. You see the way that they are, and they take the first of all, they are picking a few objects and then they are kind of making them in 3D, not all of them. And then what happens is that they are, they, this lays down the overall network of relationships that exist between these different spaces and the spaces themselves that are seen for their three dimensionality. So it's not about the relative scale of each of these, it's about the relative uh, relationship rather of each of these with each other. Um, if you look at the work, more work by Atelier Bawao, you'll find these drawings and all completely, you know, very carefully done black and white drawings of uh, of uh, buildings in Tokyo uh, that can be quite um, that can be quite beautiful also. Um, anyone wants to say something um, before we uh, go to the next piece? Uh, what am I doing? Yeah, I'll just leave it in. Something we can sum up, you know, from uh, what we've received today uh, is um, to go back to the purpose of this entire class was to look at the idea of the book and how healthcare is delivered in your neighborhood. So um, one more thing which you need to look at and which is very apparent from all the images we've seen is to whom is it delivered? So it's not just about healthcare and saying, I have a pharmacy, one, two, three, four, or clinic, three, four, five, six. It's about who are the people who are using it. And the illustrations, the books, the drawings all show the, the flavor of, of what makes this neighborhood so unique. So you have to pick up that, that emotional content of your neighborhood. And you have to put the two together. And that's the subtext. Now you have to play to your strengths, whether you draw, sketch, collage, photo, um, write, doodle, you've got millions of options that were shown to you today. But play to your strengths for one purpose, that is communication. You have to communicate to us, what is this neighborhood? How does it throw up healthcare? Who goes there? And what is this all about? How do the trees play a role there or ben benches play a role there or how do people walk on the footpath there? How do they spill out of a clinic? So we want to see this quality, the qualitative uh, um, nuances. Um, I think another thing that has come through this entire series is you must choose a genre. You can't just say I'll do anything as it comes. So when you play to your strengths, 
you decide I'm going to go through and format my book in this way. It might be a loose format that is layered or it might be a very narrow format that just uses one system. Maybe it's just sketches or just photographs. So choose your genre and work it. Finally, how do you put it together is, I think the method that is best is you create scrapbooks. You put all your information into some kind of a sequential order, densify what goes onto each page or each set of pages, and then refine and edit them until you get your book. So unless you plan it, gather your material and go, it's going to be very hard for you to get the kind of quality that you're seeing through this whole day's presentations. So that's that's my distillation from what we were shown today. So work it into these six steps and keep look, thinking back on what you saw today. Okay. Or quick. I saw sharing screen. Any questions? Yeah. Any questions from anyone? We have to share screen again. Whose slide is there? I, I can share it more. That's okay. Okay. I hope all of you are there behind those screens. <laughs> yes. We are yes, doing. Yes. We are doing. Shravan, we are taking it to ourselves. Yeah. Rohan, who was that artist which who made that uh, graphic book with like those slides and like there was an insect attacking? I don't know this. Uh, the book, one? I mean, just, yeah, yeah. you know, I, what I, I, I mean, I think that, you know, uh, Janela showing the archigram thing was very good because I think this idea that a booklet can make an argument. You know? And I think, I mean, there's so many ways in which, and they're literally booklets, right? They're an amazing website, by the way, archigrams, uh, University of Westminster has all their booklets available online. It's good to kind of go there and just look at the modes of language, languages that they use to make those arguments. It's quite incredible, actually. Or even the other thing that may be also interesting for you guys to look at is this entire series of books that is called Pamphlet Architecture. Um, it was It's actually a series of different books. Many different architects have worked on it, from Stephen Hall to Lebius Woods. And they have designed these books as arguments. And each, each of them has a very different form, a, different, a very different mode of argument. Even that might be interesting. Okay. Uh, Rohan, can you um, read the name of the last uh, thing that you It's said? called Pamphlet. Pam pamphlet architecture. Pamphlet. Okay. Pamphlet architecture. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you might find them. I think some of them can be downloaded from the internet somewhere. If I'm not wrong. Yeah. And the Archigram uh, website has all their nine, uh, nine and a half, has their nine and a half pamphlets, which they made from 1961 to 1974, I think. Only nine. That's what they did. <laughs> anyway, um, so what our ambition is now, just to kind of move to the next phase of the thing, we have around 20 days for your final, for your first jury. 20 days we have for your first jury. Uh, your first jury is on the 30th of this month. George, mm -hmm. am I right? Yeah, I've shared it on the thing also, on the team's general. We have 30th, 30th, you have your first jury, which is exactly two weeks from now. Now, in these two weeks, uh, at the end of these two weeks, you have to give us, uh, each one of you will have to give us two things. One is you'll have to give us, you have to design your book. It has to be finished by then, which will build your argument entirely, including your choice of site and program. And you will also have certain kind of ideas about what your design project is going to be about, a concept about what your project is going to try and be doing, formally, whatever, um, ideas, I know, whatever your concepts are. Ambika, you had your hand up, you had a question, Ambika? No, that was on by accident, sorry. Okay, yeah, no, you put your hand up. Okay. So that's one thing that you'll need. Um, is this clear? So we'll have 
the booklet that's submitted and the then booklet becomes a way for you to kind of move to the next phase, which is of course concept. And we hope to have your concepts in place. So your faculty will start talking to you about your concepts next week, next Friday. Right. Um, parallel to this process where you're developing your own individual uh, booklets, you also are putting something together for the entire class to use as a repository. And who's going to talk? Yeah. Uh, so I think just to sum up again what Rohan was saying, uh, we're in the ninth today, 30th we are looking at, a, at, a, at the first jury, which is a concept review. Uh, today we move the project into Good. stage two. Uh, the stage two actually we are uh, imagining the whole class to get divided. Jarella on book design, when we did one. Hello. Hi. Apple can continue. I think I will. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we are currently at the end of the second week. Uh, which is today is the ninth. Uh, today we're introducing stage two. Uh, I'll get into the details in the next slide. Uh, over the next three weeks, uh, we're looking at a parallel investigation uh, which will be done jointly by the entire class. Uh, and then the kind of stage two culminates with your kind of conceptual uh, responses, architectural ideas to scale on a site that you will select, uh, which will emerge from this booklet and the current neighborhood and narrative study that you're doing. Uh, for stage two, we are uh, we're, uh, going to divide the class into three large conceptual kind of categories. One is going to look at uh, healthcare facilities and the tangibles within it, which which means we are looking at uh, architectural case studies, uh, looking at maybe uh, how architects have responded or how uh, other kind of facilities that exist in India and abroad uh, in different parts of the world, uh, different scales, materials, uh, if uh, people have addressed various kind of aspects of architecture, this, this will mainly be run, done through case studies. Uh, the second kind of uh, division is uh, looking at health, uh, health healthcare infrastructure through through the idea of the, through a conceptual lens, which means that we are looking at uh, basically it's a study of policy. So healthcare policies that have been implemented in India, other countries as well. Uh, uh, to see how policies have changed uh, through time. Uh, maybe in India, maybe some other kind of successful policy examples which existed or which was implemented for a short period of time anywhere. Uh, to talk about uh, any kind of specific healthcare policies that came in uh, uh, with regards to gender or implementation to uh, see if particular kind of uh, uh, parts of society were targeted or facilitated through policy and things like that. And basically to study the existing framework. Uh, this is uh, the existing framework. We bring it in over here. It's important because we need to understand in today if uh, you are building a healthcare facility or we are building healthcare facilities as architects in our cities, towns and villages. Then what is the framework? What are the kind of funding mechanisms? What are the policies through which uh, the uh, the making of such facilities and, and the deliverance of healthcare is possible? Uh, and the third one is is the technical, so which basically looks at a, a lot of uh, analysis of data, technical requirements, building standards. Uh, as we all know, like hospitals uh, and healthcare facilities are extremely kind of sometimes uh, uh, like poorly designed because they're a direct result of building standards, which says room should be minimum this size, corridor width, and things like that. But uh, but to also kind of imagine a better healthcare infrastructure and architecture, we need to understand or make sense of what these building standards are, where they emerge from, and, and why are they important. So uh, what, what uh, we are going to do after this class is upload a list uh, where the entire uh, student, where the entire body of the class will be divided into th these three large categories. This is just an example of a sheet that we have made. Uh, we will be sharing the link with you so uh, we can start working on this together. Uh, each uh, one of the three categories will be assigned to a guide. So within each guide group, there will be three or four students who will be looking at uh, the tangible, the conceptual and the technical. Uh, and, and we'll kind of start building on this sheet uh, and start assigning what are the kind of things that we're looking at, what is the scales, start collecting 
details, uh, you know, website links, uh, things like that. So we can start building this repository on on paper at least, uh, which is through this sheet. And uh, I think 20th is something that we are imagining uh, that we have a, again like a long session like today, where we have presentations uh, by these three large groups. Okay, that's. Mute. Yeah, and uh, we are hoping that these groups will develop an internal mode of communication such that every single person within these large groups uh, will be producing a very specific thing. So we don't want to we don't want it to be a situation where there are five people doing all the work and the rest are just hanging around. So we need to know we need we need to have a very clear game plan by Tuesday by the entire group. Uh, let's I need uh, let's let's make a name. Uh, let's just call it a group, okay? Uh, by the groups, uh, by each of these three groups, in terms of what their scope of work is and how they intend to go through and what everyone's role is going to be within that group. I think that's a plan of action that you'll need to put into place by Tuesday. Um, yeah. So that that is then that what we'll kind of continue by. And then actually after that, it's really up to you. You know, you guys are the ones who are in charge of putting that group together. You will kind of put it together in any way that you want. At the end of this entire, on the 30th, we will get is four really important documents. One is one that states at, is a collection of different models through which healthcare has been developed, conceptual models, policies, movements, whatever, larger conceptual models. The second, the architecture through which this healthcare has actually been also delivered, which is, of course, looking at case studies, examples, buildings, hospitals, clinics, whatever, right? Good, good architectural examples, whatever. And these could be not necessary. And if you think that it's not necessary that they all be hospitals or healthcare clinics, and you think that there could be buildings that we could learn other things from, context response or something like that, you know, those can also be that they just have to be in the right category. You don't only learn uh, how to design a hospital from other hospitals. Like right? you don't only learn how to design another school from only school buildings. Sometimes you learn things from, I don't know, other things as well, right? So it's important to do that. So the second is the architecture. And the third is the technical. The technical includes number of beds, number of doctors, numbers of things, right? And all the standards that come along with it. You have uh, the National Health Board standards. You have all these standards that come along with it. Then you have standards of beds, etc. So we get these three books, and we get one compilation, A4 landscape, okay, of the stories of healthcare, 88 stories of healthcare in different areas. So that will become like a volume. Do you guys think that even the first three books should be put together in the same format as A3 landscape? Yes, I think. So fine. So that's what we'll do then. At the end, so you have 20 days, which is quite a bit of time to do that within 88 students. So you know, and I don't think that putting it together should be too much of a problem. Okay. Is this clear to everyone? Any questions? Yeah, I'd, I'd just like to add that if uh, one of all can text me or uh, on the chat kind of add your uh, Gmail address, which the entire class uses. Uh, because one of the reasons of making a Google Sheet is that uh, all of us can kind of work on it together and, and ensure there are no overlaps. So because if there are going yeah. to be roughly around 30 people or 27 people working within a particular kind of field, uh, we don't want case studies and things like that to replicate or overlap like that. So that's something which we'll all have to maintain. And I think each one of us have to deal only with three students, so it's easy to do. Uh, but I think we'll have to maintain the discipline of kind of updating that Google Sheet and keeping records. Yeah, I think that it's a very important for the for the group, let's say the group that's working on architectural case studies to make sure that they have internal coordination between them so that they know what everyone is doing. So that is why don't we do one thing. Let's get one one or two, two people from each of these three groups to be in charge of this, you know, as people that we'll talk to as a faculty. We don't deal with the entire group. We talk to only those three students like we did it for all study tips. We used to do that. Na? He or. Uh, Apu just pick na. Two, two people from each of these verticals, each of the three verticals. Make them in charge so that those are the only people we talk to. Uh, Rohan, we have yet to divide the group. So I think George and I will meet around 12, 12 okay. and do it. And we'll assign two people from the group and give it to them. 
Yeah, yeah. So then they then then we speak only to them. We don't speak to the rest. There's yeah. no point in us yes. speaking to the entire class. Okay. Yes. And, uh, any questions, people, or should we then go back? We have an hour left on the class, so maybe a quick conversation within Shravan's our own group. Yeah, Shravan. Good. Hello. Um, yeah, I, I was uh, asking if uh, so. We're making a booklet, right? And I'm uh, kind of connecting it to the. Way we did our allied uh, booklet in the sense that we're representing, although instead of representing an action or a object, we're representing ideas here, we're representing activity. But I still decided the graphic. So, what exactly are we doing in a booklet that we can't do in a presentation? It's a form, uh, Shravan. What the book does is that it gives you uh, two things. First of all, it is different from a presentation because a presentation has a person speaking usually. Okay, so usually what happens is that people depend on the voice as a voiceover to navigate that entire story through. Okay? What the reason why we are saying book is that it is um, it is something that six years from now somebody can pick up and get a get a get a sense as to what uh, the argument was. That is the main one. Uh, the other one is that there's something about physicality as well. Uh, there's, there's a sense of scale to it. Uh, and I think to get a sense of scale uh, is is a, is an important thing when 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 one is making an argument. Right. So we've only chosen the book. We could have chosen the presentation. It's not too much to do that. But we felt that since you guys had not done a study trip last year and you all have not worked with the making of anything physical, uh, we felt it would be a good idea for this semester for you to try to work with something physical. As simple as that. Okay. So we could have chosen anything. Yeah, Shravan, the big. The big difference between um, a page on a presentation and a page in a book is um, in a presentation it's content light and in the book it's content heavy. Yeah, so you don't you don't cram too much information on a presentation slide, whereas in a book you want to be quite uh, the information has to be quite uh, tight. Yeah, so that's that's how you would look at these two different things. Sorry, uh, I couldn't hear you. Uh, my audio kind of glitched up. The book has more condensed data, or the uh, and more information, or vice versa. You tell us. You tell us, Shravan. Well, if I'm not there, I'm assuming there will be condensed information to compensate for my <laughs> lack of talking. <laughs> Shravan, don't ask. I'm sorry. I, I I have a feeling my brain's not working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Huh? Are we are we giving All right. format? Uh, uh, do we have to pick some people who are in charge of the format? I, I, no, Ambika Ambika has already done a format. She's uploaded in the okay. general uh, file, right? Ambika, haven't you? Oh yes, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Format it just yeah, has so a that's the, like the overall kind of a uh, thing she has made. And uh, and what I've done now, guys, I, I've just uh, organized that folder because everything's everything were like out. So I made some subfolder. Sorry. Um, so I uh, so yeah so there is class information and some uh, and for the compilation I made another folder so you get it in the general voila thing uh, it, and Ambika what she's done is like she's created this uh, A4 landscape okay so largely she's put an image and put it where where the text so some placeholders where the text goes and where the title of the thing will be where your name goes and stuff like that so it's easier and the temp and the, it's an indesign file uh, right Ambika yes yes. Yeah, it's an InDesign file. Uh, you all can pick it up from there. If you'll, I hope you all have InDesign. I just get InDesign. Uh, uh, yeah, from your friends or you know, steal it or something. Don't um, say that. It's being recorded. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah. you so, didn't yeah. say that. You didn't say that. I didn't say that. That. that was a joke. Yeah. Who said that? Yeah. Mm. Uh, and uh, and yeah, so uh, Apu and I, uh, we will uh, make the list and we'll send it to you guys. Okay. And uh, yeah. Raj will meet around 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fine. Fine. And I'll uh, I'll send the attendance on behalf of everyone today to the office. Oh. So all yeah, yeah. Thanks. 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 Okay. thanks. Okay. And do we meet in groups right now? Yeah. Yeah, we can. We have some time. We have an hour, but uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Bye, guys. See you. Bye. See you. Right. On the See other you. Side. Bye. Bye.